You know, there used to be a saying in this country for a long time, what's good for General Motors is good for America. I think that's the case this morning. General Motors posted strong revenue and earnings as Americans paid record high prices for automobiles because they had the cash. They could afford to do it. Here now to discuss Fox News contributor Robert Wolf. He's also CEO of 32 Advisors and David Bonson, Bonson Group Managing Partner and Founder. David, let me start with you. Of course, the ADP number is not the BLS number. We get that on Friday. I think it's a fine no report in many ways, even better than the government data. 227,000 jobs. The street was looking for 189. Pretty good news. Yeah, it's a good number, and it will have it will have another good number on Friday. And what we've been doing for quite some time is kind of rolling averages of three months at a time to just sort of take out various month by month lumpiness. But I don't know anybody who possibly disagrees with your conclusion. The jobs data is very good. There's a very low amount of unemployed people, and the people that are employed are making more money. That's all good. Robert, I would agree. I would say good jobs number. Anytime wages are going up, it's a great thing. Um, you know, if we looked over the last 20 months, I think under President Trump, average job gains have been about 188,000. Under President Obama, it was 211,000. So we've had 40 straight months of about 200,000. So it's not surprising by these numbers. But I think anytime GM's doing well, anytime industrial America's coming back, we should be applauding. And I think that's the point I, I, I try to point to, because there are like these mining jobs and these construction jobs and manufacturing jobs, uh, 38,000 of them, according to ADP. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't even think we can generate those kind of jobs I'll anymore. tell you what upset me about the GM numbers, because they were obviously very buoyant. But they're going to ask 18,000 salaried workers to take early retirement. So they're getting nervous for the future when they're trying to cut costs. And if you look at their numbers, they did very well on the high-priced cars, the high-end SUVs. So they did well on those margins. But as far as auto sales generally, it's not going so well. well so I, anytime you're kind of yeah. doing good for the corporation, but then you're asking workers to kind of be cut, that's not a good sign. That's, that's not a good sign. Nervous. That's not a good sign. And I'll, I'll tell you, I think that's a, a discussion I've had in a segment I've had, uh, particularly called corporate virtue signaling. And, and you can even dovetail that to, to buybacks while you're laying people off. So, but I think the fact that, that Americans, uh, David Bonson, are buying these expensive SUVs or have the ability to, it's, it's pretty interesting. I mean, we are seeing the death of the car in this country, despite, you know, the paying more for SUVs and crossovers and have, having a higher fuel bill. That might be the ultimate sign of consumer confidence. Well, there's, it's interesting data in the overall auto sales world. I mean, for one thing, we have to separate leading indicators from lagging indicators. What, what things are taking place that tell us about the future, what's to come, versus things that tell us what just got done happening. But the problem, Charles, and I think you and I have talked about this before on air, we um, had a significant amount of financing incentives in 2014 and 15 that helped pull a lot of sales from the future into the present at that time. And I think it distorted some of the numbers throughout 16, 17. And so there's a lot of ambiguity as to how the numbers will look. And the market had kind of overpriced that effect and, and basically underestimated what GM's numbers would be. They outperformed. Stock has gotten rewarded today. And, and I'm not trying to rain on your optimistic parade. You and I share an optimism for the American economy, obviously. But I don't think you can overlook at, at this one company and this one quarter. And I don't think you need to, because I think 77% of companies outperforming earnings expectations and 25% year-over-year profits growth across the S&P 500 is optimistic enough. We don't I, need another right, story I, to right. validate I, I, I would what's been a real earnings renaissance. I would agree with David on GM, but you and I spoke, it may have been last week, on Ford. Okay, they missed yeah. completely. Uh, obviously, yeah. China's hurting them, tariffs are hurting them, and they talked about uh -huh. cutting a thousand plus you know, jobs. You it's interesting. If someone so pulls up a four year two chart, bookends. well, pull up a four year chart of Ford. I'm writing a book on the market now. One of my case studies is Ford and General Motors. Ford is a, is a company that just totally blew it. I don't know that I would use Ford as a proxy for the U.S. economy. They're no, laying off 70,000 people. To re no, no, they're, no. They're, re they're, re they're reorganizing. I, I think that's a, not a, a good one because. Ford is a company that absolutely blew it uh, and, and in many, many ways. But 
What about these other companies that are reporting, and I'm saying from a variety of industries, that are doing extraordinarily well? You know, it feels to me that this was a very strong earnings season. I know that some people think it's mixed. It doesn't feel that way to me. It feels that we've had good earnings. The question is, do they feel the same going into 2019? And the one thing, I don't want to rain on anyone's parade because I hope the economy continues, but Friday's GT, GDP number had a lot of negatives. Okay, Industri- industrial production, inventories. Well, you know, inventories was, were up. Inventories was inventories business up. The, inventory. number, the number came out better than Wall Street expected. Consumer was extraordinarily strong. Consumer was, was extraordinarily, extraordinarily strong. strong. Two thirds of the economy is the consumer. Government spending was three hundred billion. Our deficit's now going to be over one trillion. We could have that fiscal responsibility discussion. Well, again, you know, those are all good topics. But overall, though, you got to admit that GDP number was was better than everyone thought it was going to be. I would agree with that. But there were some negatives and, in and, it but too. Charles, Charles, the key wrap, so ingredient quick, within. Yeah, the key ingredient in the GDP number, though, that one has to be concerned about was CapEx. CapEx is needed to continue driving productivity. The tax reform is a supply side initiative. It will produce productivity. But the capital expenditures Q3 were lower than we expected. I think the two negatives, CapEx and also on the trade front, were both both readjust. I think think there was a big major, major imports to get ahead of tariffs. That will go away in the future GDP numbers. And I believe businesses are going to step up investments. Gentlemen, thank you both very much. Thank you. Always a great conversation.